Hey YouTube, welcome back. Today we're going to continue with the series of breaking down how to build muscle mass. Okay, last week I went through nutrition, the basics. So if you haven't watched that video first, do go and watch that. This week we're going to go through nutrition again. However, this week we're going to go through, let's say, the smaller rocks. Okay, so last week we were covering nutrition and the things that will probably contribute to, let's say, 70 80 percent of your goal of building muscle mass. These things here are going to be the things that are going to be more, say, let's say 5, 10, 15 percent of the contribution right, in terms of nutrition. Um, so they have a, they play a smaller role, yet if you're looking for the best results, then it's definitely worth still looking into. Don't forget, if you do enjoy the video, please do drop a like. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. And if you've got any questions um, after this video, do throw them down in the comments below. So like I said, if you haven't seen the previous video, Nutrition uh, Basics, the first video, do go and check it out first before you watch this. Otherwise, some of this might not make as much sense as it should. Okay, so one of the things we spoke about was protein intake. Okay, the, the importance of eating enough protein. Now, if you want to break down a little bit in a little bit more detail, you know, the first and foremost thing is that we eat enough protein each day, like I spoke about in the last video. However, if you want to take it a little bit further, it would be ideal and it would be, you know, potentially add a bit more of a benefit if we had more frequent protein feedings through the day, okay? Now, a simple way to do that is to simply take your protein intake, okay, again, going off last video, take the number of meals slash snacks that you're going to have through the day and just simply divide it by those number of meals so you're getting an idea of how much protein you're roughly going to need to eat in each meal slash snack, okay? So let's say, for example, you need to hit 160 grams of protein each day. You're having four meals, again, slash snacks. So that would mean that in each meal snack, you probably want to aim for about 40 grams of protein within each one. Okay, And that way, you're having frequent feedings of protein at a decent size. Okay. Now, you know, if you look at various places, some places will tell you you shouldn't eat past a certain amount of protein for your body weight in one meal because some of it gets wasted and you know you should eat at least a certain amount. I wouldn't get too concerned with that level of detail, okay, because essentially if you're eating enough protein within the day and you're having enough frequent feedings of protein through the day, you're probably going to be okay, right? And if you break down your overall protein by the amount of meals that you're having, chances are it's going to fit within a decent range anyway. Okay, next we're going to talk a little bit about what you should be eating before and after workouts, okay? And now we're gonna keep this really, really simple because it doesn't need to get confusing. The two things you wanna focus on when it comes to meals beforehand and meals after are, is that meal beforehand going to help you get the most out of your training? Okay, so is it gonna help you, um, you know, really train as best as you can? And then the meal afterwards, is it gonna help you with recovery? Okay, is that meal afterwards gonna help you in terms of recovering, after that session so you can then you know train again well the next day or whatever it might be and therefore the two best macronutrients or food groups that are going to help towards ensuring you know you're going to train well and you're going to recover well are carbs and protein okay so the meals before and the meals after your workout i would just ensure a one decent in the size of protein but if we're going off the last thing we spoke about where you're breaking down the amount of protein for each meal that should be the, that shouldn't shouldn't be an issue anyway. And secondly, with carbohydrates, you know, just making sure that we're having a decent sized feeding of carbs within these two windows. Okay. Now again, we spoke about carbs last week, potentially taking up um, the majority of our remaining calories once we've, you know, worked out our protein intake and made made sure we're having a decent amount of minimum healthy fats within our diet. Okay. So what you could do here with carbohydrates is just making sure that across these two meals, potentially, you know, within those calories, within the carb allowance that we have, we're having enough or a decent amount of carbs within that allowance across these two meals. But if you're ensuring that the meal before and the meal after are decent in the size of protein and carbohydrates, and we don't have to go crazy on those size sizes, but if they're decent, then you're going to go a long way towards ensuring that the quality of the session is going to be as good as possible, and you're going to be doing a lot recovery afterwards don't get too concerned about that meal afterwards because 
essentially, you know, depending on the time you train, and um, if you're training earlier on in the day or midday, there's potentially going to be a few meals afterwards anyway, which will help with recovery. If you're eating later on in the day, then it might be a good idea to potentially have um, a meal decent in protein and carbs for recovery. If it's maybe your last meal of the day or whatnot. Um, but if you're training early to mid part of the day, I wouldn't stress it too much. Another thing I'd mention is you don't have to eat 30 minutes an hour after training. This idea of this anabolic window, don't stress that. It, it gets overemphasized. You know, there isn't a particular 30 hour window that you have to eat in within. Um, most people, you know, are going to eat within a two, three, four hour window after training anyway, which is absolutely fine. The only other couple of things I'd mention for uh, eating before and, and after training beforehand, you know, um, you'll gain an idea of how soon you can, can eat before training before, you know, it might potentially backfire, all right? I would leave it at least sort of like 45 minutes to maybe an hour just to let that food digest. So when you do go and train, you're obviously not feeling uncomfortable. Like I said, you'll get a good idea of how soon you can eat before training. So if you do eat within like a 45 minute window and you're not feeling great, then obviously extend that a little bit uh, later on next time. And then afterwards, again, like I said, don't worry about, don't stress about the time. But I probably would actually allow your body to just, you know, de-stress a little bit. Training is a stressful situation, right? It's a physical stressor. Um, so after training, I would give your body a little bit of time just to actually chill, relax, bring your heart rate down before you do eat. In terms of during training, um, whether or not you should be having some stuff like carb shakes, you only really need carb shakes in two situations. One, if you're training for a very, very, very long time. Okay, so let's say you're training past two hours, which if you're just doing weight training and you're looking to build muscle mass, I probably wouldn't advise. You don't need to be training that long. But if you are, for whatever reason, then carb shakes can come in handy. And two, if you are really pushing the boundaries of calorie intake and you're struggling to get calories in, potential carb shake could be used within this window just to help bump up calories a little bit. But um, I wouldn't get too carried away with them. Um, they're probably not needed as much as they may be hyped up. And the last thing I want to touch on is food volume in relation to calories. Okay, now. One thing you might find when you're trying to add muscle mass, when you're trying to eat in a surplus, especially more so over time, right? When you might have to be driving food up a little bit over time. You might find that hunger gets very low or you struggle to hit the amount of calories that you need. Okay. Now, in that scenario, food choices will become very uh, important. Okay. And picking foods that are low in volume. So basically... Think of foods that are low in sort of water weight or fiber, basically just easy to eat without really filling you up. Foods that are low in volume but still decent amount of calories would then become favorable for some part of your diet to help you eat or hit that number of calories quite comfortably, okay? Without having the struggle of feeling like you're really overeating or really fighting hunger, right? Um, so again, it goes back to what I spoke about in the first video where we're talking about, yes, make sure nutrition quality within your diet is good, but you know that doesn't have to be 100% of your diet. Your diet doesn't have to completely be nutritious foods. Sometimes those foods that are less nutritious, that might be lower in volume but higher in calories, might have their part to play when it comes to allowing you to hit your calorie target if you're struggling to hit it, hunger's low, um, and so on. Hopefully you found this video helpful. That's going to be it for nutrition. If you know if you're following the basics of nutrition uh, one video and you're following these little finer details in terms of nutrition, you're going to be doing essentially all you really need to to be um, adding muscle mass. Okay. Next week we'll take it further and we'll start looking at training. So if you did enjoy the video, please do drop a like. If you have any questions on any of this, do from down below in the comments. If there's popular questions that pop up, I can always do another video covering that. Uh, if you haven't already, please do subscribe so you can keep up with the rest of the videos. Take care.